Hey guys, how are ya? How are ya? You guys there? Hold on, let me make sure I got everything ready. Hold on. It's now or never. Come hold me tight. Whisper my darling. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Be my love, be mine. Be mine. It's now or never. Oh, my hands is burning. It's now or never. My love will wait. What did I do? I am a Roger Spark Jew. Hold on, guys. It's just what happens when you don't think ahead and you make a mistake. It's now or never. I'll hold me tight. Whisper, my darling, be mine tonight. Be mine. Because I am stupid. I am so stupid. My love will wait. All right. Is that all right, guys? At least I tried to I tried to entertain you by singing, right? It's now or never, my love. All right. Good to see you guys. Hopefully, we'll get the regular crowd. Glory to God, we're at least getting to 140, 150, 160. Right? 140, 100. Lord, glory to God, slowly but surely, for his glory, for his honor, for his praise. We love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yep, in Jesus' almighty name. Hold on, let me see this. <laughs> you are a world-class hater. That's all you are, hater. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was Hater Wood, even terrorizing me on my own text message. Guys, you want, you want me to let you in on a little uh, secret? What's up, Joanna? Joanna, I love you, your Lord. You remember that song, Joanna? Was that sung in your honor? There is something scary about you, Joanna. I'll tell you what's scary. You want to know? Can I tell you what, what's scary about you? You want to know, you want to know what makes me scared of you? Delilah part. Samson had a Delilah, and she was his downfall. I would change my last name because you are a Christian who loves Jesus. Amen? You're born of the Spirit, right? And you love Jesus? Right, sister? I'm, uh, obviously, because you're here. You love Christ. And you're in love with Jesus? All right. Now, you don't have names of people who are not godly and exemplary. Like, who would call themselves Jezebel? It's like saying, hey, Joanna Jezebel, be careful that name. The Lord save you from that name and make you a warrior for the glory of Christ. Yeah, I mean, it's scary. You know, Delilah. And, by the way, who sung that song? Does people know we're just waiting a few more minutes? <clears throat> who sung that song? Joanna, I love you. Did anyone know who sang that song? Right, Mike. Mike, have you been blessed, man? With all these sessions and all these debates, and were you here in the previous session too, Mike? Hey, that's not bad, because envy can be good or bad. So there's a good envy. Like, man, I envy you, Sam, because you're so good looking. I wish I could be good looking as you. See, that's good. You know, you realize. Are you saying what? Honestly, guys, you're saying I'm not good looking. Look at me. I'm looking at myself, and I want to ask me out. Hey, Sam, are you single? You are? Can I take you for coffee? Purely platonic. <laughs> okay, folks. <clears throat> We're waiting by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And by the way, just wanted to make sure. People on Discord, you listening? People on Discord, are you listening? And Mike, if you did you watch last night's session with Andrew Griffin, the Unitarian? Daughter of Christ, is she listening on Discord? Because we're going to talk about the Muslim Jesus who critique it and use the Quran even as a witness to the glory of Christ. So what did you see from my discussion with the Unitarian? Let me repeat it because I said it previously. This is how I operate. This is my policy. If I meet someone who's not a believer and is not a Trinitarian, if he or she is respectful, does not blaspheme, does not insult, does not ridicule my God, the triumph God, 
the deity of Jesus Christ, the Bible, and ridicule lampoons, Trinitarians, I will spend as much time answering their objections, being patient with them, loving them for the sake of Christ with the hopes that they come to faith. But if a person is a nasty anti-Trinitarian or anti-Christian who loves to mock the Trinity, mocks Trinitarians and the Bible, then do not whine or complain when I treat you like a spiritual dog and put you in your place. See, that's my policy, right? That's how I work. I don't care if you don't believe in the Trinity and the Bible. If you come respectfully and honor and respect what I believe and ask sincere questions, even objections, I'll answer them. And you saw that with the Muslims several days ago, Abdullah Aman, how I treated him. Do not mock my God. Do not insult my God. Do not blaspheme my God. Do not mock my brothers and sisters who are Trinitarians. And I will spend as much time necessary by the power of the Holy Spirit to answer your objections to the best of my ability. Right? Yes, Mike, I believe he's going to come to faith. So now pray for Andrew Griffin and Abdullah Aman. These two, one Muslim, Abdullah, and the other, a Unitarian, they really asked sincere questions. And when they got answers, they didn't attack or ridicule mock. Pray the Holy Spirit works in them miraculously and brings them to the feet of Jesus. Which reminds me, let's ask the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit to bless us. <clears throat> Father, we just first want to say we love you. We adore you. You are worthy of praise for who you are. We love and adore and praise your son for who he is, the Lord Jesus. We love and praise and adore your Holy Spirit for who he is. You are God, and that alone makes you worthy to be loved, praised, honored, glorified, and worshipped. <clears throat> Father, we ask that you bless this session. Lord, please strengthen my, my throat. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life. I'm not young as I used to be, Father, Abba. And so my voice is not as strong as it used to be. But my strength comes from you, from the Lord Jesus, from the Holy Spirit. Strengthen me with the health I need solely just to glorify Christ. Health only to be used to glorify Jesus and bless your people. And Father, please grant me a powerful anointing to speak truth without error. To recall these verses and these facts and interpret them correctly for the glory of Jesus. May Jesus Wash us in his blood. Wash our loved ones in his blood. Wash my daughters in the blood of Jesus the Lamb and seal us by your spirit and fill us with your spirit. And have your Holy Spirit loosen my tongue to save me from error and stammering and confusion. And to bless your people, Father. To bless your people, Lord Jesus. To bless your people, Holy Spirit. Bless them through me. And take us to a higher level. To become more like Jesus in the way we live, the way we worship, the way we love. <clears throat> To be holier and righteous and pure and patient and loving and merciful and generous and sacrificial. Save us from our own flesh. Save us from Satan and his children and the world. That Christ will increase and we decrease and sit a throne upon our hearts. And Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we ask you. Holy Spirit, we beseech your face. Use these sessions to bring Muslims to the feet of Jesus. They too need Jesus. As everyone else does. We love you, Abba. Bless the internet. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat again for the glory of Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah, I'll go, Father, Son, Spirit. Folks, I'm going to share two, two things with you, your family. I know there are unbelievers who listen to this and will use this to attack me, but that's okay. The Lord Jesus is my shield. I want to share two things with you. Okay, you guys ready? First of all, I was supposed to start half an hour earlier, but I was blessed. Because I've been trying to reach my daughters. And finally, my daughters responded and we had FaceTime. And because they missed their Baba, my oldest one and my youngest one, my 10 and 7-year-old, they didn't want to stop talking to me and I didn't want to stop loving them. So I kept love bombing them, affirming them, telling them I adore them. Then after Jesus, they are my love. They're, they are the reason why I want to stay on earth. <clears throat> And not leave right away because they are my gifts from Jesus and I love them more than anything on earth. I only love Jesus more than them. And I kept making them laugh and encouraging them because I love these girls. And they miss their Baba. And I'm not away because I wanted to be away. Satan and the children of Satan, this evil whore judge of the devil, put me in a situation where I had to flee. And I'm going to talk about that there is a biblical basis to flee from corrupt judges and rulers. For your safety. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, as I'm trying to love love and affirm them, how does Satan distract me? 
to discourage me so I don't do a live stream. But because we're covered by the blood of Jesus and filled by the Spirit, he has been destroyed. He is defeated. He's under the feet of Jesus. And we are more. So, Spirit, please bless the connection. Yeah, Please, Lord. Sorry. Sorry, that's Satan. But we rebuke him in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. We are more than victors, victors over him by the blood of Jesus. So how did he try to distract me, folks, so that I would just get sad and not do a live stream? But because of Jesus, who is almighty in us and greater than he was in the world, you want to hear how the devil tried to distract me from doing the live stream? And that's why if you love me for the sake of Jesus and you've been blessed by these uh, sessions, covenant with me to pray for me and my daughters and fast for us, that God will do a miracle. My youngest daughter, not knowing any better because she's only seven, as we're talking, she goes, oh, Martin is here. Martin is my ex-wife's boyfriend, and he spends more time with my kids than I do, and that devastates me. I don't care what she does. That's between her and Jesus. She can be with whomever she wants, but I just want my kids. I want to be the only man in their lives. I want to be Jesus to them. So please pray the Lord Jesus will put a fire in Martin's heart, remove him from my kids, and chasten their mother to fear God and repent. So that's what the devil tried to do, folks, to discourage me. But glory to Jesus, I'm here. You know why? Because at the end of the day, it's not about my kids. And I'm not saying this to be a hero. I mean this. Even if I lose my kids, I have Jesus. And I'd rather lose my kids lose everything on earth, even my life, as long as I don't lose Jesus. And I mean that. I will never love my children as much as I love, love Jesus, let alone more than Jesus. He is my God. He is my love. He is my life. Jesus has loved me even before my children existed. And I say this, and I mean this. Saints, I mean this. The Lord knows. I'm in love with Jesus, and I can't live without him. Though I love him imperfectly and I disappoint him, one thing I can tell you, I cannot live without Jesus. And you who are born of the Spirit, you can't live without Jesus. And the good news is we don't have to live without Jesus because he'll never leave nor forsake us. Amen? But can you pro promise to pray for my daughters? It is one of the most devastating things for a father, for a father, to not to be able to be there for his daughters, to hug them and kiss them and affirm them and put them asleep. But there's another man entering the home. And that's the home that we got by the provision of God through his people, a home that the Lord blessed me to get with the money for ministry that their mother took away because of her adultery and her lust. But God is good. And we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. May the Lord have mercy on her. Yep. So, but now let me give you something. Yep, it does, Sophia. But I stand because my Lord Jesus lives. Okay, now, let me give you something else. This one is now a praiseworthy note, okay? You guys know Carlos Xavier? Carlos Xavier. Who, who knows Carlos Xavier? Anyone? Yep, Carlos Xavier is the son-in-law of Anthony Buzzard. Anthony Buzz, Buzzsaw, Buzzard is one of the leading Unitarian scholars. They are Unitarian heretics. They are heretics demonized, used of Satan, to deny the Trinity. They're Socinians. They believe Jesus is just a man. Now, Carlos Xavier was there listening to my debate with Andrew Griffin. And I challenged him, and first and the last, who's here, challenged him, in the comment section to debate me. And I even said, I'll take you, your father-in-law and Dale Tuggy, the three most despicable anti-Trinitarian, Unitarian heretics you can ever encounter. I'll take all three of you on the same day at the same time. He ran, but guess what he did? He reached out to David Wood. This is why I was texting him. He reached out to David Wood and he challenged David Wood to debate him. Does the gospel of John Teach that Jesus is God. So David contacted me. He goes, do you want him? I go, with pleasure. So then he responded, and guess what his answer was? This champion of Unitarianism, this coward, this agent of the devil. Guess what his answer was? Here, yeah, right here. Let me show you. Go ahead, see. He replied, thanks, but no. Thanks, but no. Okay? Thanks, but no. So you have it now official. 
text, thanks but no, because he knows what I'll do to him and to his false god, his satanic god, by the power of the triune god. Okay? See, these are the people I was saying I don't respect. I'll go for their juggler. I will decimate them by the power of the triune god. But someone like Andrew Griffin, we will love and pray for him. Because you saw the spirit of Andrew Griffin, right? Humble and not blasphemous. You know he's going to come and worship the Trinity. So pray for Andrew Griffin that the Lord will bring him. Now, with that said, my focus is on critiquing Sunni Islamic beliefs. Sunni Islamic beliefs critique. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Muslim Jesus. And I want to equip you because some people say, well, I don't want to come to a session that's about Islam. No, you should still come. Why? Because not only will I refute Islam, but I will bring it back to the Bible. And you're going to learn something about the Christian faith and how to witness to Muslims. Because you need to reach Muslims. It's not an option. It's a command of the triune God. The triune God has commanded us to make disciples of all nations. And Jesus has come to save Muslims. If it wasn't for a Christian witness, Nabil Qureshi would not have been saved. If it wasn't for David Wood's love for Jesus and honoring Jesus by being a witness, Nabil would not have heard the gospel and gotten saved. So when a Christian says, well, I'm not interested in Islam, then you're not interested in seeing Muslims get saved? And beyond that, if you don't evangelize Muslims, they will missionize your children. Muslims are commanded to convert non-Muslims to Islam. So if you're not studying how to refute Islam, to get Muslims saved and inoculate your own family and Christians from Islam, then don't complain when one of your children or a family member becomes a Muslim. And it happens all the time. I'm going to give you a story. Okay. A young lady who was an evangelist working with Rick Warren's church in California. Okay. This is a true story. I met the father, right? What's Rick Warren's church in California? What's the name of it? You're not late, brother. We just started. What's the name of that church? Saddle Creek? Is it Saddleback or Saddle Creek? I don't know. What is it? Okay, Saddleback. Okay. A young lady raised in an evangelical Christian household, part of Rick Warren's church, part of his evangelical team, was engaged to a young Christian man. Guys, true story. Her father was rich. He was a millionaire. A father who was a millionaire, and I met him. Okay, listen to the story. I'm not lying. The Lord bears witness. If, if I'm lying, he will hold me accountable. Okay, I met the man. Okay, father was a millionaire. Okay, listen to this. Engaged to a young Christian man. They met a Muslim student who started challenging them. They were having a hard time responding. And she made the foolish mistake of meeting him alone. He ended up sweeping her off her feet. She left her Christian boyfriend. She became a Muslim, left the church. Married him and then settled in Jordan, devastating her parents, breaking their hearts. Okay. Do you hear what I just said or no? Did it, did it like no? Yep. And I met the father and I met the mother. The mother was in tears and the father was in tears. He didn't know what to do to get his daughter back. She even spoke to Nabil Qureshi. Nabil Christian, when he was alive, she talked to him. Still, you know why? Because as I said the other day, and I'm going to say it again, it's not a matter of truth. If it was based on facts and evidence, the facts of history and science proves the Bible is God's word and that the God of the Bible exists. But it's beyond simply facts. It's a heart that's hardened by sin, a heart that is enslaved to sin and Satan, and only the Holy Spirit can set that heart free. See, she didn't care about the truth anymore because she was in love with him. So when he captured her heart, he captured her mind. So Jesus no longer had her heart. Let me repeat this. Jesus no longer had her heart. Whoever has your heart has all of you. If someone has your heart, he owns your mind, he owns your body, he owns all of you. So if you fall in love with Jesus, if you fall in love with Jesus then Jesus has all of you. If Jesus has captured your heart, he's captured your mind, your body, your, your wealth, everything. The moment Jesus doesn't have your heart, 
it's inevitable you'll walk away or do what you want and justify what you do. Exactly, Pedro. Thank you. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall also be. So what was the problem? She fell in love with the man. And her love for him was greater than her love for Jesus. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you for the support. You with me there? Right? Is everyone there? Did that sink in? Yeah, well, that's the thing, Anna. You and I would say she never knew Jesus. She never tasted Jesus. She never truly loved Jesus. Because how can you leave Jesus for someone? But from all external appearances, she was an evangelical. She preached the gospel. She was active in the church. And she still fell away. And be, let, that's why we got to stay close to Jesus, in love with Jesus, and cling to Jesus. Right? Because nothing will satisfy you. The grass is not greener on the other side. It may feel good that moment. I guarantee you. In time, those butterfly feelings will dissipate. And then reality kicks in. And you're going to end up with kids from a Muslim man and divorced and shamed and disgraced. And that's not just with that relationship. Any relationship. That it is not honoring to Christ. That's not anchored to Christ. In Christ, it's bound to fail. I mean, here, take, for example, my ex-wife. You think that God will bless any relationship she's in? She'll prosper in any relationship? After she's defied the Lord and defiled herself and destroyed a family because of adultery? You think so? Absolutely not. Until she's broken, groveling at the feet of Jesus, and repents and seeks her satisfaction in Christ, she's not going to prosper. No one will. No one can. Nothing. You with me there? So with that said, this is why you need to study Islam. Because if you don't, you're going to lose family members to Islam. You will lose family members to Islam, or to Buddhism, or to atheism, or agnosticism. So when someone says, well, you got a topic on Islam, I'm not really interested. Why not? Don't you want to see Muslims saved? Don't you want to protect your household, my daughters, from ever considering becoming Muslim? Right? I pray the Holy Spirit will guide my conversation because it's from the Spirit. You will need to hear it. Anything from the Spirit, you will need to hear. And so that's why I always ask the Holy Spirit, you take over. Okay? And that's just one of many stories, man. I can give you story after story. There was a story of another man. And I heard this from a friend who talked to that person. He was part of John MacArthur's church. He's a missionary in, in, the, in Europe. I think he said UK. Don't quote me on it. To his chagrin and shock, he found out his daughter was listening to Muslim sermons online. She became, uh, she became brainwashed by ISIS and she had tried to book a, a plane ride to Syria because she wanted to convert to Islam and join ISIS. And this guy is a Christian sent by a solid church to preach the gospel in Europe. Yep, another story. I'm not lying. The Lord knows. I'm not lying. Okay. So when someone tells me, but yeah, I don't want to hear about Islam. So what are you going to do to respond to their criticisms? If you don't want to see them saved, at least you want to inoculate your family from considering their arguments. So that said, yeah, it is, Mike. Mike, it's more common than you think. We don't share it. For what? More common than you think. Oh, I'm going to give you a third story. Can I give you a third story? Can I give you one? I actually saw her picture in the yearbook, the graduation book. A woman graduate from Moody Bible Institute. And the sister in the Lord that told me the story, her name was Olga. See, I'm even telling you, Olga. She was in New York, and she was told about a former Christian missionary who became a Muslim, a female Muslim. She went, she heard a story, she was shocked. You know why she was shocked, guys? Part of her story was, I was a graduate of Moody Bible Institute. She went on a mission field. Now, again, I'm going by memory. I believe she said China. She was so, so disheartened, heartbroken by the disunity among Christians. Her heart was shattered. She came back, got involved with Islam, left the faith and became a Muslimah and married a Muslim. And she was making the rounds, sharing her testimony. I used to be a Christian and I graduated from Moody and now I follow Allah and Muhammad. I saw the picture of the lady in the Moody Bible Institute graduation book, yearbook. I saw her picture. She showed it to me. 
from Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, one of the top Bible colleges in America, conservative as can be. Right? You get my point. So what's the point? We need to know this religion and show why it's satanic at its core. It's evil. It's false. It's immoral. And it's full of holes. The attractiveness to the people. Now, people tell me, okay, here, let me answer that question. And I actually played some clips on Discord to prove this. You know what the common theme among many of them happens to be? Many of these so-called Christians have become Muslim. You know what you'll find? And it's common in their stories. And guys, can you prove me wrong? I'm challenging you. I want you to falsify my story. I want you to go tonight, do Christian converts to Islam, listen to their story. This is the common thing among them. If it wasn't because a woman fell in love with a Muslim man, this is what you'll find among men and women who convert. You know what you're going to find? You ready for it? The, please prove me wrong. Can you take a moment this weekend and say, I want to prove him wrong. These Christians had come to a point where to them, the Trinity did not make sense anymore. It was irrational. They couldn't understand how Jesus could be God and why the death of the innocent Jesus could be just and atone for the sins of the guilty. So they already rejected those doctrines. They rejected those doctrines. They already concluded they can't be true. They must be false. So what does God do? Once you put God in a box and will not allow God to be God, he'll give you the desires of, the, of your heart. So you don't want to believe in the Trinity? You don't want to accept that Jesus is the God man and he died on the cross for you? I got the religion for you. I remove my hand of protection. Here you go. Islam is for you. Did you catch it? Because they were not <clears throat> exposed to Unitarians or Jews who would encourage them to convert to Judaism. Because in Judaism, it's very hard to become a Jew. They'd, they'd actually encourage you to become a follower of the Noahite religion. They discourage Gentiles from embracing Judaism. They encourage you to follow what's called the Noahite religion, which is for Goys who don't accept Jesus anymore. So you see how real God is and how accurate the Bible is? God says, if you seek me with all your heart and you don't put restrictions on me and put me in a box, you'll find me. Because I'm not hard to find. I'm looking for you. But if you tell me what I can and cannot be, then you don't want me. You want an idol after your own likeness to tickle your ears. Well, there are plenty of idols out there for you. So don't put God in a box. Don't tell God what he can and cannot be, right? And don't tell God, I'll only accept you if you're not a triune God. I'll only accept Jesus if he's not God in the flesh. And I'll only accept Jesus if he didn't die on the cross. And God says, all right, you don't want the real God, the real Jesus, the real spirit. You want an idol after your likeness, an idol that makes sense to you. There are plenty of those. So don't blame God for removing his hand of protection and handing you over to the desires of your heart. That's Jeremiah 29, 13 term, but it's also Hebrews 11, verse 6. Is that clear? Is now all this making sense? Rebecca, I would sing you a song, but there's no song that has Rebecca in it. Joanna has a song, right? And there's a song for Sherry, because Rebecca is another warrior for Christ. Joanna was here, so it's Joanna. But there is no song with, that I know of. I know there's a song for Sherry. Oh, Sherry, our love holds on, holds on. Oh, Sherry, it should have been going down. Made you a All right. All right. Now, are we ready? Without all that as a warm up, as a backdrop, as an introduction, are we ready now? To use the Quran to prove the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though the Muslim Isa is a satanic counterfeit, God has allowed Satan to inspire Muhammad to say enough things about that Isa to bring people to the true Jesus, the historical Jesus who's the Christ of the New Testament. Are we ready? Yeah, no, don't. Life is good. We'll talk about it later. Okay, so do you guys remember in the previous session, I gave a real quick, quick breakdown 
of the Muslim Jesus. So let me let's talk about the name Isa. Isa. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you the similarities and the differences, and then use them to do two things: to show you the satanic origin of Islam, that truly Muhammad was inspired by Satan because of his depiction of Jesus, and also show you how you can use the statements of the Quran to bring people to the true Jesus. Because even though the Quran is a concoction of Satan, God worked in such a way to allow Satan to move Muhammad to say enough right things about this Isa to be used to bring people to the true Jesus and show Muslims that Jesus is God in the flesh. You understand what I'm doing here? God can even take the books of pagans, of idolaters, witches, and Satanists and use statements in those sources to bring them to the truth of God. And I show you that in the previous session. Paul did that in Acts 17, verse 28. In Acts 17, verse 28, Paul quoted two Greek poets, two pagans, about God being our father and we being his offspring and use the statements of pagan poets to point to the truth of God being the father of creation. So Paul could do it. We can do it. We have the authorization from the spirit in the word to do it. It's right there, Acts 17, 28. As some of your own poets have said, he's talking to the Greeks, the Athenians, even your own poets, these Greek pagan poet writers have said, for we too are his offspring. Right? Is that clear? So why am I using the Quran? Because I can use the Quran to bring it to the truth of the gospel. Just like Paul used pagan sources, Greek poets, Greek so-called prophets, right? Pagan sources to bring them to the truth of God. Okay, the Muslim Isa. Let's start with the name Isa. Let's start with the name Isa. Okay. To this day, scholars are baffled. Scholars are baffled. Why did Muhammad call Jesus Isa? Why? Why are they baffled? Because if you know anything about Jesus' Hebrew name, his Hebrew name is Yeshua. Yeshua. The Arabic cognate of Yeshua is not Isa. It's Yeshua. Yeshua. You have Arabic-speaking Christians here, and they will confirm, they will confirm that they call Jesus Yeshua. And in the Arabic New Testament, Jesus is not called Isa, he's called Yeshua. Yeshua is the Arabic equivalent of, of Yeshua. Yeshua. Any Arabic speakers here that can confirm what I'm saying? And we have plenty of them on Discord. Right? Am I lying, Arabic speakers? You got it. Okay. So scholars are baffled. Scholars are baffled. Why did Muhammad... Why did Muhammad call him Isa? There is no good historical answer. Some will say, well, it's an Arabicized form of the Aramaic Syriac Isha. No, that's stretching it. Some think that he was influenced by the Jews who mockingly called Jesus Isa. If you're looking for historical explanation and answer in history, we really don't know. We really don't know. But I will tell you that the late, not so great Ahmad Didat believed. You guys have heard of Ahmad Didat? How many of you heard of Ahmad Didat? The late, not so great Ahmad Didat, a wicked blasphemer whom the Lord struck and left him pretty much a human vegetable for 10 years. I don't mean to be insulting, but it's true. Okay, anyway, he wrote a booklet that you can read for, for free online Christ in Islam. Christ in Islam. In that booklet, look it up, folks. I'm not making it up. In that booklet, he says that Isa corresponds to the Hebrew word Esau, which is found throughout the Old Testament, specifically in Genesis. So Ahmed Didat believes that Jesus' Hebrew name is Esau. Which Esau? Esau, the brother of Jacob, the son of Isaac, whom God Cursed because he sought the material things of the world, not the spiritual things. You understand that this man didn't realize that he just exposed the satanic origin of the name. If Jesus' Arabic name, Isa, corresponds to Hebrew Esau, that means the source behind the name is a source that opposes Jesus and wants to attach to him the name of someone accursed. Right? No, I'm not kidding, Billy Mandalay. 
Google Christ in Islam Ahmadidat or watch his lectures. He's got a lecture, Christ in Islam. He admits it. Who do you think would have moved Muhammad, inspired Muhammad to attach to Jesus the name of an accursed one? Someone who hated God, who rejected God for material possessions, for the goods of the world. Who do you think? Why do you think this satanic source, this evil source, wants to rob Jesus of his real name? You guys, you, you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Why this evil, diabolical, demonic, satanic source would want to rob Jesus of his real name? Because the Bible tells us why Jesus was called Yeshua. Jesus in Greek, Yesu in Arabic, Isho in my mother tongue. Matthew 1 21. Yep, you see Satan in this. Let me show you. Matthew 1 21. Exactly, Roni. Here it is. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Here's why. Notice the angel tells. Joseph, you give him the name Jesus for this reason. This is the reason why you give him the name Jesus. Pay attention now. And you guys know this because you've studied this or you've heard me say it. Give him the name Jesus because he does this. What does he do? He will save his people from their sins. So what's the connection between Jesus and that function? The angel says, call him Jesus for this reason. What reason? Because he will save his people from their sins. The word Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yeshua is a shortened form of Yehoshua. Yehoshua. Yehoshua means Jehovah is salvation. Yehovah, Yod, He, Vav, He is salvation. So the angel was saying, name this child Jehovah is salvation because he is the Jehovah who comes to save his people from their sins. The name points to Jesus being the God-man, the divine savior. Do you know that? Before I move on? Now that name was a common name. It was given to many Jews. Many Jews were called Yeshua. That didn't mean they were God. But note why he was given the name. Unlike those who were called Yeshua, he was given the name specifically because he's God who comes to save his people from their sins. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Yeshua wasn't a name given to other Jews. It was. It was a common name. What I am saying, and you need to hear me out, what I am saying is that he was given that name for that specific reason. He's called this name because he is God coming to save people from their sins. Everyone else is called that name not because they're God, but because it says something about the God they worship. But he's different. He's called that because he is that. Yahovah. That saves. Now let's put Matthew 121 with Psalm 130, verses 7 to 8, back to back. Exactly, Michael D. Matthew 121 with Psalm 130, verses 7 to 8, back to back. Thank you, Jesus. See, here's a guy named Jesus. He's called Jesus, but he's Hispanic. Does that mean he is Yahovah Salvation? No, that's just a common name. Now notice what the angel says about Jesus and compare it. With what the psalmist says about Jehovah. Compare. Matthew 121. She will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus. For he, Jesus, the son that she will give birth to. This human baby. This male baby. He will save his people from their sins. Notice they are his people. And he saves them from their sins. Notice Psalm 137. To 8. Oh, is there hope in Yehovah? yod heh vav -Hey, Jehovah, the Lord, Yahweh. For with Yahovah there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Wow. The psalmist says Jehovah saves Israel, who happened to be his people, from their iniquities. The angel says that baby born of the Virgin Mary, that virgin conceived and born male baby, that is Jehovah who comes to save his people from their sins. You got it? Yeah, you can use the King James here because we're not dealing with the Unitarian. 
I don't want to move on. I just want to take give you a moment for this to sink in. Simmer. Did you catch it? You understand the significance? I don't want you to go around saying that, you know, the name Jesus in of itself proves his deity. No, there are many people called Jesus, even the Jews, Yehoshua, Yeshua. The text shows us that's why he was given the name. This male child is given that name because he is actually what the name means. He is actually our God who comes to save from sin. Right? So here you have, from the very first chapter of Matthew, Matthew identifying Jesus as Jehovah God being born as a baby. Matthew is identifying Jesus as Jehovah who's now a baby. Conceived in a virgin womb by the Spirit, born as a human male baby. That human male baby, that's your Jehovah, Israel. The God baby, the God man, the God child. Psalm 130, verses 7 8. You with me there? Christ's awakening. Why are you asking me a question that you know it's not relevant to the topic? You're trying to violate the rules deliberately so you can get blocked? Okay, you with me there? For those of you who are actually paying attention. Right? So from the very first chapter of Matthew, Matthew identifies Jesus as Jehovah in the flesh, Jehovah being born as a human male baby. You know how astonishing that is? To tell a Jew, Jehovah became a, a baby. Jehovah condescended to be born and become a human baby, a helpless baby. You kidding me? Who? Jesus, you mean Mary is the mother of Jehovah in the flesh? She gave birth to Jehovah as a baby, so Jehovah became the God baby, the God child, the God man? Yep. Mary carried Jehovah our salvation in her womb for nine months? Yep. And you hesitate to call her the mother of God? Why? Why would you hesitate to call her the mother of God? She didn't give birth to his divine nature. She was the ve vessel who was sanctified, purified by the Spirit to conceive a physical body, human nature, for Jehovah to take to himself so he can become truly human by nature. And that baby forming was Jehovah being formed as a baby in her womb. And that baby that came out, that was Jehovah coming out. Right? So why would you have a problem calling her the mother of God? In fact, would any of you hesitate in calling her the mother of Emmanuel? Because one of Jesus' name is Emmanuel, right? So do we, do we not say Mary, the blessed mother of Emmanuel? Blessed mother of Emmanuel, right? Now, why do we call her the mother of Emmanuel? Matthew 1, 22 to 23. And why would you stop? It's true. It's biblical. Don't be afraid. It's biblical, Pedro. Don't stop. Here, Matthew 1, 22, 23. You watch here. Watch. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, that's the blessed mother of our Lord, Mary, the blessed Mary, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. There you go. Matthew, inspired by the Spirit, says the virgin is giving birth to Emmanuel, which, which is God with us. The virgin gave birth to God with us. So God with us came out of the virgin to dwell with us. Yes, Captain. Okay. Now let me show you something about Matthew 123 that's going to blow you away. See, this is why I say just because we're talking about Islam doesn't mean it's not going to be biblical and we won't go in depth. Right? Let me show you something. Watch here. You don't see it because you got to read the Greek. The Greek, And even if you can't re read the Greek, here is the Greek transliteration. Right? Greek transliteration. Go here. Click on it. I want you to see the Greek words for God with us. Click on it. I want you to see the Greek words for God with us. Okay? It's right there. It's meth 
Hemon ho theos o theus o theos o the I'm trying to see how Greek words say o theos o theos see a Greek speaker with tikani skesikala o theos meth hemon o theos meth hemon ha theos it's not simply Jesus is God with us the Greek says ho theos the God is with us Jesus is the God not a God or theos. Do you see that, folks? You see that? Matthew, writing in Greek by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, This baby born of the virgin is the God, O Theos, who's now become a human baby from the Blessed Virgin. Not a God, but the God. It's not simply Theos, it's Ha Theos, O Theos. It, did it sink in? For those of you who may be hearing it for the first time. And then Matthew ends the gospel the way he began it. Matthew ends the gospel the way he began it. He ends the gospel by reiterating what he said at the beginning. Jesus is the God who comes to dwell with us. And that's how he ends the gospel. Because he quotes Jesus, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. He ends it the way he began it. He, re he re reiterates, as the Spirit loosens my tongue, reiterates at the end of the gospel the point he made at the start. Here, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, specifically verse 20. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, amen. I, Jesus, am with you always to the end of the age, end of the world. So wait, Matthew. Jesus is the God who came to dwell with us, yes. And he's the God who will remain with all believers to the end of the age, yes. He's Emmanuel. God is with us and will stay with us. Showing that Jesus is omnipresent, present with all believers, omniscient, knows where all believers are, and omnipotent. He's with all believers to preserve them and empower them. Clear? So can I ask you a question? Who do you think would inspire Muhammad to rob Jesus of the significance of his name? Who do you think would move Muhammad to give Jesus a name of someone accursed and not his rightful name that tells us who and what he is? Who do you think? This guy with the Gnostics. Stuck for Allah, Rabbil Alameen. This guy, Captain with the Gnostics, yeah. Okay. Now let me give you further proof of the satanic origin of this religion. Let's go to chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran, Surah Al-Tawbah. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. The guy in the cave, I like that, yeah. Watch what happens here. Surah al Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 30. I don't know. I think first last is going to post it. Yeah, the Jews, huh? Ayya Salad. Okay, watch here. And the Jews say Uzair is the son of Allah, Ezra. And the Christians say Nasara. Nazarenes say the Messiah is the son of Allah. These are the words of their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who displeased before. May Allah destroy them how they are turned away. So notice, if you say Isa ibn Maryam is Isa ibn Allah, Isa, the son of Allah, Allah will destroy you, Allah will fight you, Allah will damn you, will condemn you because you imitate the unbelievers of old who are perverts like you. So Allah is not the father of this Isa, who Muslims say is Jesus, and Allah is the father to no one. Now write these verses down, we're not going to look at them. Write these verses down, we're not going to look at them. Write down chapter 5, verse 18 of the Quran. Chapter 5, verse 18, we're not going to look at them. Write them down for reference. You can read them later. Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 18. Chapter 6, verse 101. By the way, Terry, I was born in Kuwait in 1972. That's my birthplace. May the light of Jesus shine in my birthplace for his glory. Chapter 6, verse 101 of the Quran. That's the second reference. I already gave you chapter 9, verse 30. Write down chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 88 to 93. Chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 88 to 93. Okay, 
Chapter 21 of the Quran, verse 26. Write down chapter 21, verse 26. Write these down. Okay. Write down chapter 39, verse 4 of the Quran. Chapter 39, verse 4 of the Quran. And then chapter 72, verse 3. Chapter 72, verse 3. Now, all of these verses say the following. Allah cannot have a true son unless he has a girlfriend that he has sex with. The Jews and Christians are not the sons of Allah. They are not his beloved. No one can come to Allah as a child. The highest relationship you can have with Allah is a slave to master relationship. Allah is your master. You are a slave. That's all you are. That's what the Quran teaches. That's all you are. That's specifically taught in chapter 19, 88 to 93. Okay? Now, what does the Bible say about someone who says God is not the Father and Jesus is not the Son? 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 to 23. 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 to 23. Watch here. That chart my phone computer. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. What, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. You are an Antichrist if you deny God is Father and Jesus is the Son. Muhammad says, my God is not Father, Jesus is not the Son. Muhammad, you are an Antichrist, one of the most wicked and vile Antichrists that the world has ever seen. Did you catch it? Muhammad says, my God is not a father, Jesus is not the son. Well, according to the New Testament, you're an antichrist. You're possessed by the spirit of antichrist. So how are you going to respect such a man? How do you have Christians going around respecting Muhammad, saying, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Shame on you, Christians, dishonoring the Bible, dishonoring Jesus, and speaking nicely of this man. If you don't want to say anything bad, don't say anything nice. Be silent. Right? And I don't want to offend some of my Catholic friends, brothers, sisters in Christ. But two popes, Pope John Paul II and Pope Francis, both kissed the Quran. Why would you do that? How dare you do it? You don't need to desecrate the Quran. You don't need to insult the Quran. But why would you kiss it? And don't take my word for it. Google it. Google it right now. Pope John Paul was given a green Quran by some Muslim in Iraq. I believe it was in Iraq. And he kissed it. And they took pictures and plastered all over social media. And there's even many Catholic priests and bishops who said he was wrong for what he did. At least they're honest enough to say he was wrong. I know you're looking out for the safety of Christians. Okay, if that's the case, you don't need to disparage the Quran. You don't need to insult the Quran. And you definitely don't need to kiss it. And here Ariel, who's an honest Catholic, an honest one, who loves Jesus and his word above everything else, he goes, that was possibly the worst thing he did. God bless you, brother, for your fidelity to God and his word. Okay? So let me repeat, I'm not saying that you need to desecrate the Quran, denigrate the Quran. If you are a world leader representing Christianity and you're afraid of backlash, don't say anything. Leave it to us. Just don't say anything positive. Don't say anything negative. Don't denigrate it. Don't kiss it. Leave it to us. Because understand, you're in a position that if you say something, there'll be backlash and they'll hurt Christians because of you. I get that. I understand. But you don't need to say anything good. Just don't say anything bad. Right? So I don't want you to take my word for it. Google it. Kissing the Quran. And then you had the Chaldean bishop of the Chaldean Catholic Church also kissing the Quran. Why? Why do you need to do that? You can respect Muslims by not denigrating the Quran and insulting Muhammad. 
But you don't call him a prophet. You don't say peace be upon him. And you don't kiss their book. From what I remember, Sai Christian was Pope John the Paul. From what I remember. From what I, what I remember was Pope John Paul. He was the first. Okay? But do you need any more proof? Any more proof that the Quran is satanic? It's antichrist? No, it was Pope John the Paul, I believe. He was before the Chaldean uh, bishop. Because the Chaldean bishop would be underneath the head, the authority of the Pope. From what I remember, I, I don't... I don't know if it was Pope John Paul or the camp, but it's there. They did it. And the order doesn't really matter. They did it. That's what that's what matters. Right? Now, I understand if I am a leader of a church and the world looks to me as a figure representing the mass of Christianity, anything I do is being observed by the world. So if I say something derogatory to the Quran, then the Muslims in Muslim lands will start killing Christians. So for their sake and safety, I don't denigrate the Quran. I don't insult Muhammad. I remain silent. I'm not an expert on Islam. There are experts on Islam, Christians. Ask them. For me, Jesus is God in the flesh. The Bible is his word. That's fine. Fine. You can do that. Say nothing. But to kiss the Quran? There's no justification for that. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Because you're kissing an antichrist book. You are giving respect to a book that attacks Christians and posits a God that is the spirit of antichrist and another Jesus who's not his son that elevates a son of Satan, an antichrist, whose teachings have been used to subjugate Christians, murder Christians, rape their women, and enslave their children. No, thank you. I don't touch this book. Now, with that said, quite clear. The Quran robs Jesus of his name and its divine significance. The Quran robs Jesus of his relationship to God. Showing it's truly antichrist, right? No, Michael Deke, I don't want to respond. Be okay, toilet paper is better. Don't ever insult toilet paper, it's more valuable, especially in light of the coronavirus. Okay, right? So, is everyone clear? Did you guys check it up by the way? Did you go to Google and see the picture that I'm not making it up? So, we got that out of the way. The origin is satanic. And further illustration of its satanic origin. Further illustration. On the basis of 40 Arabic words, and I thank James White for counting the Arabic words. I would have never dreamed of counting them. Chapter 4, verse 157. 40 Arabic words whose meaning to this day is obscure and Muslims cannot agree on its precise meaning. 40 Arabic words... Jesus' death on the cross is rejected by Muslims. Chapter 4, verse 157. They neither killed him nor crucified him, but it so appeared unto them. On the basis of that sentence, 1.7 billion Muslims say Jesus did not die on the cross. Who do you think wants to get 1.7 billion people to deny the historical fact of Jesus' crucifixion in order to rob the saving significance of that act. Satan. So notice, Islamic tradition denies the death of Christ on the cross and therefore his bodily resurrection, denies the sonship of Jesus, and denies his real name. Do you get any more antichrist than that? Do you get any more antichrist than that? Thank you, Satu. Okay, now, with that said, using the principle of the Bible, using the principle of the Bible, where even inspired apostles and inspired writers in the New Testament used the sources of pagans and unbelievers to prove their point. I already gave the verse earlier, Acts 17, 28, and I gave those verses in the previous sessions. The Bible gives us the authority, the license, 
to quote even the sources of Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, agnostics, Muslims, if there's something true there that we can use by the power of the Holy Spirit to bring them to the true Jesus, right? So even though the Jesus of the Quran is a false Jesus, a satanic counterfeit, still God is so sovereign and majestic that he worked in such a way to allow Satan to say things about that Isa that resemble the true Jesus, which you can then bring Muslims to the feet of the true Jesus. So this is what I want you to do. Learn how to use the Quran for the glory of the triune God. Are we ready? Amen, theistic, leaning, agnostic. I pray I'm one of those that God will use for that purpose. Okay. Number one, the mother of our Lord Jesus is the only woman mentioned by name in the entire Quran. She's the only woman that has an entire chapter named in her honor, Surah Al-Maryam, chapter of Mary, chapter 19. And Jesus' maternal grandparents are the greatest human creatures, the greatest creatures that Allah created. Can okay, I repeat again? The Quran says Jesus' maternal grandparents, the family of his maternal grandfather, meaning Mary's father, the greatest human beings, the greatest creatures that Allah made, and Mary is the greatest woman that Allah created, and the only woman mentioned by name in the entire Quran and has a chapter named in her honor. Chapter 19, Surah Al-Maria, the chapter of Mary. Did you get that? Did you understand what I just said? So now I can give you the proof. And remind me before I end this session to give you links. I have articles detailing all these facts, articles for you to read, upload to your websites with my permission. And disseminate for the glory of Christ. You understand what I just said? What the Quran says? Mary's the greatest woman created. Mary's father's family. The greatest human beings ever created. In fact, greater than any creature Allah's ever made. And Mary's the only woman mentioned by name. And has a chapter named in her honor. Let me prove that to you. Are you ready for the proof? Are you ready for the proof? Are we ready now? By the way, is this blessing you? Is this refreshing you? Are you still being blessed, even though it's an Islamic topic that I'm using to bring back to the Bible and glorify Christ? Because a lot of people say, I don't want Islamic topics. And I don't do much Islamic topics. I'll be focusing more on the Bible. But we need to do this. We need to pray for Muslims and see them get saved. Okay, chapter 3, verse 33 of the Quran. Chapter 3, verse 33. See, now, Maria Ciara, hold on, Maria Ciara, I'm going to have to correct you. No, there may be Catholics who are wayward and don't know their faith and out of their ignorance turn Mary into an idol and commit idolatry. But Maria, I have to be honest to God and speak the truth. No, those Catholics who know their tradition faith, they are not worshiping Mary. No, they are not. So don't lump Catholics with Muslims. Catholics, Orthodox, do not worship Mary. So please don't start this debate. I already did a series on the communion of saints. I cannot get into that topic, but please don't misrepresent what another tradition teaches. You would be correct. There may be people in the Catholic Church who don't know and are worshiping Mary and have made her more than she is, but even the official teaching of the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church would condemn them and rebuke them for it. So let's not start. <sighs> the Lord has a sense of humor in raising me up to be a teacher because he knows I lack patience and self-control. Okay, anyway, let's come back to the issue. Chapter 3, verse 33. Chapter 3, verse 33 is my juicy. I got it. I got it. Let me. Uh, chapter 3, verse 33. Hold on. Three verse thirty-three. Who's scared? That was Maria. Maria is a sister, not a man. No, we're not buffering, Sargon. Why don't you stop, you little sinner, Sargon? I just went to charge my my uh, computer. Okay, chapter three, verse thirty-three. Re read with me. Lo, 
Allah hath preferred Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran above all his creatures. Now it's buffering. Why, you sinner? Please, my God. Yeah. Sargun, either you're a prophet or you got some evil power, bro. Sargun David, you said it's buffering and then about a minute later started buffering. What are you, prophetic or are you cursing me? Which is it? <whistles> wow, man, that was power, dude. See, we Assyrians are dangerous. If we're not saved, we're dangerous. We can wreak havoc and evil. But glory to God, we're saved and we use that power for the glory of Christ because that man is one scary man. And notice the contradiction in his names. Sargun is the name of an Assyrian king who's a pagan. And David is the name of a monotheistic Jew, king of Israel, the ancestor of Jesus. So he just mixed paganism with monotheism because he's trying to get Sargun saved. All right. Anyway, chapter 3, verse 33. Chapter 3, verse 33 of the Quran, Surah Al-Imran. Watch here. One more time. Pay attention. Guys, pay attention what the Quran says. Lo, Allah preferred Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran above all creatures. Not just human beings. Of all creation, Allah singled out Adam. Then from Adam's line, he singled out Noah. Then from Noah's line, the family of Abraham. And from that family of Abraham, the family of Imran. So the Quran says the greatest creatures, human and otherwise, greater than angels and jinn, are the family of Imran. Now, why the family of Imran? Because Imran is supposed to be the father of Mary, the grandfather of Jesus. Guys, right in your face, black and white. Jesus' maternal family are the greatest of all creation. Greater than angels and jinn, better than Muhammad and Muhammad's family. Right there in front of you. Are you seeing it? Now let me prove to you, Imran is supposed to be Jesus' maternal grandfather, the father of his blessed mother. Let me prove that to you. Let's read 35 and 36. Please truck with me and don't get lost in the discussion. Lord, please bless the connection for the glory of our Lord Jesus. By the way, thou shalt not pontificate. People on Discord, are they being blessed? Even daughter of Christ, even though she knows this? Is she being blessed? Let me know. Chapter 3, verses 35, 36. Remember when the wife of Imran, notice, the wife of Imran, the wife of Imran. So this is Imran's wife. Remember when the wife of Imran said, my Lord, I have vowed unto thee that which is in my belly as a consecrated offering. So she's pregnant and she's giving it to service to God, to Allah. Notice 36. And when she was delivered, she said, My Lord, lo, I am delivered of a female. Allah knew best of what she was delivered. The male is not as the female. And lo, I have named her Mary. And lo, I crave, I desire... Thy protection for her and for her offspring from Satan the outcast. Okay, did you catch it? Imran's wife gave birth to Mary. And then Imran's wife consecrated Mary to Allah and asked Allah, save Mary and her future son from Satan. Do you see that? Before I move on. Okay. Let me now get you the article. Hold on. Because I want to show you the hadiths. Right here. I get the, did, I, did I quote the hadith here? Let's see. Here you go. Let me show you the exposition of this, of this verse. Are you ready? Tafsir al-Jalalain. It's all in this article. Let me get you the link first. There you go. Because I want to show you something shocking. Okay? Watch here. Watch here. Imran's wife gave birth to Mary, meaning Imran is the father of Mary. Mary's mother, Jesus' maternal grandmother, supposedly asked Allah, protect Mary and her son, her offspring, from Satan. So guys, click on that link. There goes my article. Save my article. Muhammad interpreted chapter 3, verse 36. Let me show you how he interpreted it, okay? It's in my article. I'm not going to give you the links. I'm just going to quote it. This is from Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Muslim cited and Tafsir al Jalalain. Guys, watch this. Did Allah answer the prayer of Mary's mother? Yes. Notice it. Guys, read. 
In a hadith, it is stated, every newborn is touched by Satan and begins life by crying, except for Mary and her son, as reported by the two sheikhs, Bukhari and Muslim. Did you catch it? Allah honored the prayer of Mary's mother and made sure when Mary was born, he didn't allow Satan to touch her. And then when Mary gave birth to Jesus, he did not allow Satan to get near Jesus. And it says, these are the only exceptions. Every other child, Muhammad included, Muhammad's mother included, Muhammad's father included, was touched by Satan, pricked by Satan, and was made to cry, except Mary and Jesus. Except Mary and Jesus. Did you catch it? So here's the question for the Muslims. Here's the question for the Muslims. Why is Mary's mother the greatest woman that God created? Why is Mary's household, the household of the father, the greatest of all creatures, greater than angels and jinn, much better than Muhammad, Muhammad's mother, Muhammad's father, Muhammad's household, if Jesus is just a man? Let me give you the link to the article again. Are you see, you're seeing what you're doing to Islam? Chapter 3, verse 42. Chapter 3, verse 42. Yep. There's that link to my article. Please save it. Chapter 3, verse 42. And when the angel said, O Mary, lo, Allah hath chosen thee and made thee pure and hath preferred thee above all the women of creation. Wait. Did the Quran say Allah preferred you over most women? Many women, some women, sometime, or he has perverted you above all women, period. You see that? So again, you ask the Muslims, Muslim, why is Mary's father's household the greatest of all creation, greater than angels and jinn, jinn greater than Muhammad's family, Muhammad's parents, Muhammad's household, and why is Jesus' mother Mary the greatest of all women? Can you explain why? What is it? Because of Jesus. Mary is the greatest because of her son. The household of Imran, Mary's father, is the greatest because of her son. Jesus being born in that household made them the greatest of all creatures. And his mother the best and the greatest of all women. You catching it? Even though it's not the real Jesus, the real Mary, still, these are facts that you can use to bring them to the true Jesus. And there are testimonies of many Muslims that because of these verses, the Spirit stirred them up to start asking what makes Jesus so great. And because of the grace of the Spirit, ended up leaving Islam and worshiping Jesus. You with me there? Now let me show you something that is so embarrassing for Muslims. They do everything they can to try to deny that this is what the Quran teaches. Do you remember Mary's father is Imran, right? And her mother is the wife of Imran, right? Chapter 3, verse 35. Mary's father is Imran, and her mother is the wife of Imran. Now go to chapter 66, verse 12. Now many of you already know this. You've already heard this from me and others. Discovered it on your own. But still, for the newbies, chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. Watch this. Not only is Mary's mother the wife of Imran, she's the daughter of Imran. And Mary, daughter of Imran. Mary, daughter of Imran. So Mary, the mother of Christ, she's the daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste. Therefore, we breathe therein. We breathe into her body something of our spirit. And she put faith in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was of the obedient. Now, chapter 21, verse 91. Chapter 21, verse 91. Watch here. And she was she was chaste, therefore we breathe into her of our spirit and made her and her son a token for all people. So you see, the woman who had the spirit breathed into her, she's the one who gave birth to a son that became a sign for all peoples, right? So Mary, daughter of Imran, is the one who gave birth to a son, and here she, her son and her sign for all people, right? So it's Mary, the mother of Christ, right? Are you getting that? The woman who had the spirit breathed into her gave birth to a son. Her son and her became tokens and signs for all people. That woman is the daughter of Imran, whose name is Mary. 
So Mary's father is Imran. Mary's mother is the wife of Imran. Now who is Mary's? Who is Mary's brother? Let's go to chapter 19, verses 27, 28. Key verses 28. Now, I don't know if you know, in Arabic, Mary's name is Maryam. Maryam. Chapter 19, 27, 28. Then she brought him to her own folk, carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, Ya Maryam, thou hast, cast, thou hast come with an amazing thing. Ya Ukhta Harun, O sister of Aaron, thy father was not a wicked man, nor was thy mother a harlot. Now notice, Mary's Arabic name is Maryam. She's the sister of Aaron, the daughter of Imran, and her mother is the wife of Imran. Maryam is her name in Arabic. Here, let me prove it to you. Because you guys know, I know you're skeptics, you don't believe. You're like, no, we don't believe you. You're a liar. You're one of the munafiq because you are, you are perfect at nifaq. You are one of the kafirun, you know. You espouse kufr, right? Anyway, there you go. Let me show you. Let me show you, man. Right here, if you go, you'll see it says, Ya Maryama. If you go to this browser, I'll give you the link in a minute. Ya Maryama. So her Arabic name is Maryam. Ya Maryama. Ya Maryam. Okay. Here is the link. You can check it out for yourself. Okay, now, notice Jesus' mother, her name is Maryam, Mary. Her brother is Aaron, and her father is Imran, and her mother is the wife of Imran. There's only one Mary in history that had a father named Imran and a brother named Aaron. Let's go to Numbers 26.59. Numbers 26.59. Numbers 26.59. You guys already know where I'm going with this. But for some, it's going to be shocking. Numbers 26.59. They can't deny it because it's clear. Brother Aaron, father Imran. That's not a coincidence. And the name of Amram's wife, there's that name Imran, but the Hebrew is Amram. Amram's wife was Yochabed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. She bare unto Amram. Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, their sister. They only marry Miriam, who has a father named Imran, and a brother named Aaron, is Moses' sister. The Quran makes Moses Jesus' maternal uncle. Exodus 15, verse 20. Exodus 15, verse 20. Exodus 15, there's, there's 20. It's okay, Cruz. If it doesn't work, you don't you won't lose sleep over it. Find the Quran browser that has Arabic transliteration transliteration. Exodus 15, verse 20. How you doing, Magdalene? God bless you. Lord shine his face on you and every one of you. Rachel, every one of you. Exodus 15, verse 20. Before the rapture, Protestant. Before the rapture, dude. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron. Bam! That's chapter 19, verses 27, 28 of the Quran. Chapter 19, verses 27, 28 of the Quran says that Jesus' mother is Maryam, sister of Aaron. The only Maryam, sister of Aaron, is the sister of Moses, who lived at the time of Moses. So Muhammad got confused and thought that Jesus' mother is the sister of Moses. Good job, Muhammad. Good job. <whistles> Morning, Merck. And they'll tap dance. No, no, no. She's not the sister of Moses. She may have had a brother named Aaron because people used to name their children after prominent religious figures in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's a coincidence that Mary has a brother named Aaron and her father name is Imran. What a coincidence. Because in the Old Testament, there's a Miriam whose brother is Aaron, whose father is Imran, and she's a sister of Moses. What a coincidence. Yeah. Oh, I'm convinced. Oh, but now are you ready? You guys ready for more meat? The real miracle is that people think the crown is a miracle. Okay. Are you ready for more meat? Okay. 
Ed, don't hey Ed, I read your text in Discord, Ed. Protestant. I'm reading it. Be careful. All right. Let's look at chapter 3, verse 42 again. Chapter 3, verse 42. Yep. Who to thunk it? Moses is Jesus' uncle. See, Moses taught Jesus the Torah. Chapter 3, verse 42. Notice what it says about Mary here. And when the angel said, O Mary, lo, Allah hath chosen thee and made thee pure. Pure. Focus on the word pure. And the article that I gave you, I have links. The Muslim expositors say, Mary was created sinless, pure, free of all sinful passions. So Islamic theology and the Quran teaches the absolute sinlessness of Mary akin to the Immaculate Conception. Are you with me there? She was pure, sinless from her conception. That's why it says Allah made you pure. When did he make you pure? From conception. Okay? Don't worry about the link then. Forget about it. Are you with me there? And the Muslim expositors all say, yes, she was absolutely sinless and pure. So is Jesus in chapter 19, verse 19. Chapter 19, verse 19. Says, now watch the dilemma of Islam. The dilemma of Islam. Watch the problem of Islam. Okay. He said, the Spirit saying to Mary, I am only a messenger of thy Lord that I may bestow on thee a faultless son. Notice this. Jesus is faultless from conception. The Spirit tells Mary, I'm going to give you a son that's faultless, that's pure, that's holy. So folks, pay attention. Pay attention here. Mary and Jesus, they are sinless and pure from conception. Absolutely sinless, absolutely pure, free of sin. And the tradition we read, Muhammad said, Satan was not able to touch Mary and Jesus. He could not touch them, taint them, corrupt them. They were protected by God, even though Satan touched every other child, even Muhammad. Do you know why this is amazing? Not only does this teach the absolute purity and sinlessness of Mary and Jesus, of our Lord Jesus and his blessed mother, but this now proves that Mary and Jesus are divine. They're not creatures. They are divine beings in human flesh. Did you know that? What the Quran says ends up proving Mary is divine. It's not Catholics or Orthodox that deify Mary. The Quran does. The Quran turns Mary into a divine being, a goddess, along with Jesus, making Jesus a god. You know why? You guys know why I say that? This is all my articles. Chapter 16, verse 61. Chapter 16, verse 61. 16, verse 61. Yeah, watch. I'm not lying. And I like this. <clears throat> if Allah were to take mankind to task for the wrongdoing, if Allah were to punish you for your wrongdoing, guys, you got to pay attention to this verse. If Allah were to punish you for your wrongdoing, he would not leave here on a living creature. But he reprieveth, he gives them time to an appointed term. And when the term cometh, they cannot put it off an hour, nor yet advance it. So if Allah were to punish a person for wrongdoing, he would wipe out every creature on earth. He wouldn't leave a single creature alive. Chapter 35, verse 45. Chapter 35, verse 45. Watch here. Chapter 35, verse 45. If Allah took mankind to task by that which they deserve, he would not leave a living creature on the surface of the earth. But he reprieveth them, gives them a time of respite, unto an appointed term. And when their turn cometh, then verily they will know that Allah is ever seer of his slaves. Now notice what these two verses said. Two verses said. If Allah punishes creatures for their sin, he'd wipe out every creature because there's no creature that's sinless, faultless, except for Mary and Jesus. The Quran says Mary and Jesus are absolutely pure and faultless from their conception to the time Allah took them. So wait, if there is no creature that has done no wrong, so if Allah were to punish creatures for wrongdoing, he'd wipe them all out. But then the Quran says Mary and Jesus are absolutely pure, 
faultless, sinless. They've never done anything wrong. Then Muhammad, you just proved that Mary and Jesus are no more are, are no mere creatures. You just proved Muhammad, Jesus and Mary are more than human beings. They must be divine, not merely creatures. And I have articles on this. Let me get you the articles. Can you give me a minute to get you the articles? Yeah, thou shalt not pontificate. This is old. I thought you knew this already, bro. I thought you've been following me. I have articles on this. I wrote articles where I said Muhammad ended up positing three gods. Muhammad is guilty of telling the people to take Allah, Mary, and Jesus as three gods. Not Christians. Muhammad did that. Not Christians. Can I get you the article there? Yeah, let me get you the article. Hold on. I gave the link to one article. Guys, you see why I say use the material? Study them. Glory to the triune God. All glory to the triune God, Father, Son, Spirit. The information in these articles, rebuttals, and sessions are so solid and irrefutable by the power of God that even anti-Trinitarians are running with their tail between their legs. Because I mentioned earlier... When David Wood told Carlos Xavier, a wicked, blasphemous Unitarian, anti-Trinitarian, the son-in-law of Anthony Buzzard, Sam Shimon wants to debate you on the Gospel of John, proving the deity of Christ. He says, thank you, but no. He ran. That's how solid this information is. Once you learn the arguments, understand the arguments, and are able to articulate these arguments for the glory of Christ, they will run from you unless they repent and accept the truth. Don't worry about my Skype right now, Alvin. Let me get you the article. Okay, Glory to the triune God. This is also why you see Satan working overtime to attack all of us, to try to discourage us, to take us out, either by disease or illness or by a corrupt legal system or personal problems in our life. Okay, Let me get you the link. Are you ready? Get you the link. Here you go. The prophet of shirk strikes again. That's the title of my article, part one. The prophet of shirk strikes again. What a nice title, huh? Here it is. I just posted a link twice. Alvin, I'll give it to you later. Not, I'm not taking questions out. The prophet of shirk strikes again. Now, honestly, folks, even for those who are hearing it again, isn't this mind-blowing how easy God has made it for us to destroy Islam, to destroy the Islamic faith in order to take Muslims captive for Jesus? I don't know why you're not seeing it. as everyone, everyone else is. It's right here. Click on it. So let's continue with another point. We're going to continue with another point. And we'll do a follow-up tomorrow. We did two sessions. Listen to both sessions, hit the like button, pass these links on. Okay. We're going to now look at one more point to show how great Jesus is. We saw that Jesus is sinless, right? Sinless. Do you want me to show you the verses where Muhammad is chastened for sins and commanded to ask forgiveness because he's an immoral sinner, even according to his own God's standards? Now, isn't that ironic? Allah sanctions immorality, sanctions rape. San sanctions adultery, sanctions pedophilia, sanctions murder. And even though Allah sanctions all this evil, Muhammad was still a sinner by Allah's standard. Isn't that ironic? Look how grossly immoral and evil Allah is. And yet even by this wicked, evil God standard, Muhammad was still a sinner. Now, do you want me to give you those verses or do you want me to go into the virgin birth and wait for the verses where Muhammad is condemned as a sinner? You want me to talk about, show you, the, okay, the virgin birth? Let's focus on the virgin birth. All right. Let's go to chapter 3 of the Quran and read 45 and 46. Chapter 3, verse 45, 46. Let me unpack this. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 45, 46. 
And remember when the angel said, Oh Mary, lo, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, illustrious in this, in this world and in the hereafter, and one of those brought near unto Allah. Okay. And then it says, He will speak unto mankind in his cradle and in his manhood, and he is of the righteous. Now, let me explain the second part. The Quran records the so-called miracle of Jesus, that Jesus, while a baby, just came out of his mother's womb. Mary had just given birth to him, and Jesus starts speaking as a mature theologian espousing Islamic theology. Did you know that in the Quran, it has Jesus speaking as a baby, speaking Islamic theology, saying, I am the servant of Allah. He made me a prophet and blessed to my mother. Did you know that? That's in chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 29 all the way to 34. Chapter 19 of the Quran, 29 to 34. Okay? So here it says, the miracle of Jesus is, Jesus spoke while a baby. So can you imagine at the scene? And by the way, this comes from apocryphal Christian sources. Lord willing, in another session, I will show you the origin of this fairy tale. It comes from Christian sources. You don't need to quote it. So can you imagine? Here you have Mary with the baby Jesus, with Moses' uncle. So the Quranic Jesus, Moses is his uncle. Aaron is his uncle, right? That's the Quranic Isa. And all of a sudden, the people are coming to Mary. Mary, what is this you brought? How could you get pregnant and have a kid? We know your family's righteous. After all, Moses is your brother. Moses, the lawgiver, gave us the Torah. How could you dishonor Moses? Don't you know according to the law of your brother Moses, you're supposed to be killed? Right? So she says nothing. She points to Jesus. And so imagine you have a baby there. Wah, wah. Allah Akbar. I am a servant of Allah and his prophet. He's made me blessed, dutiful to my mother. So don't question her. Shh. Wah, wah, wah. That's what happened. Thank you, Radical Love. Did you catch Yeah, that's it. So she comes. She comes. Ya Ukhta Harun, O sister of Aaron, making you the sister of Moses, the prophet. Your brother Moses gave you the law. You're not to com commit zinna, sexual morality. How could you dishonor Moses and the law? But he's a baby. How are we going to talk to someone in a baby? Look, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, takbir. I am a prophet. I am blessed. All right, Mary, we get the picture. I'm not making it up, by the way. That's in chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 29 and 34. I'm not lying. It's there. Chapter 19, verses 29 to 34. And this fairy tale comes from a Christian apocryphal source. Lord willing, I'll talk about that source some other time. But now let's go back and unpack 345. The real miracle is that people think this religion is a miracle. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 45, one more time. Okay, brother? Brother, make a good point. You want me to do Zachary Nike meeting William Lane Craig? Oh, brother, make a good point. In chapter 3, verse 45. Allah, salatu ta'ala. He had the ether, alayhi salam. He took into it. Well, the preponderance of evidence points to the greater probability that this Quranic story comes from a source that's most likely fictional and has no chance of being historical fact. Yeah, yeah. You make up a good point, brother. The brother make a good point. All right. Chapter 3, verse 45. Chapter 3, verse 45. I do a terrible William Lane Craig, but you, you don't remember getting it. Okay, let's read this. No, he didn't. He didn't. 345, guys, pay attention now. This is where I need you to pay attention. Pay attention to this. 345. And remember when the angel said, O Mary, lo, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, illustrious in this world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near to Allah. Do me a favor, first and last. Just copy and paste the part where it says, a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Just that part, because we're going to park on this. And Arabic speakers, you're going to confirm this for me. Daughter of Christ, thou shalt not pontificate. You're going to confirm this for me. 
Because I want people to see what Muhammad did to his own shame and destruction. Watch here. Copy and paste that part where it says, a word from him whose name is Jesus Messiah, son of Mary. Okay, watch here. This part only. Okay, I'm going to break this down. Okay. Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Kalimat minhu. A word is kalimat. Those who know Arabic knows this is a feminine noun. Kalimat is a feminine noun. Because in Arabic, as well as in Syriac, Aramaic, and Hebrew, and Greek, nouns are either masculine or feminine. Now, in Greek, you also have nouns that are neither. They're called neuter. A word, kalimat. Feminine. It says, God is giving you a word whose name? Ismuhu. 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 But this is masculine. Ismuhu is masculine. Feminine noun, masculine. In other words, there is no grammatical agreement. Are you with me there? There is no agreement. Like Ronnie said, it should have been ismaha. Kalimat being feminine, it should have been ismaha. But it's ismuhu. Do you know why? Because the author is trying to tell you this word becomes a male person. This word becomes a man. This word becomes the man, Jesus. Jesus the man is the word. That's what it's telling you in Arabic. You catch it? The reason why there is no agreement in the grammar is because the feminine kalimat takes on a masculine identity. Kalimat is becoming a masculine being a male human being a man so right there the Quran is telling you jesus isn't simply someone created by the word of god he is the word of god because the word of god became a male became a man whose name is jesus that's what 345 is telling you did you catch it did you catch it and Lord willing, I'll go more in deep on Jesus being the word in the Quran in the second part of this session. I'm not going to do it right now. Thank you, Alvin. What I want to focus on is the virginal conception and birth of our Lord. Freddie, kalimat, the word, a word. I just explained it, brother. You need to rewind and listen. So don't ask me to repeat. You can rewind and listen, but I'm going to do it for you. The Arabic word, kalimat, word is feminine in gender. It's a feminine noun. But then it says, this word has a name. Ismuhu, not Ismaha. Ismuhu is masculine in gender. Okay. Okay. Now, Kalimat being feminine, the word should have been Ismaha. That's the feminine form of whose name. But it doesn't say that. It says, Ismuhu. Ismuhu. A word, his name is. So literally translation saying, a word, his name is. So the word is a his. Masculine person. Male identity. A male human being. No, not really. It's the nearest antecedent of Ismuhu is kalimat. Nice try though, ML. I know you're trying to really stretch the Arabic, but we're stretching it as far as we can. Okay, did everyone get that? The Arabic speakers. Can you confirm, because Muslims are going to deny this, what I just said is true. Kalimat being feminine, the word should have been ismaha, right? Whose name. But in Arabic, it's ismuhu, his name. So Allah is going to give you a word. His name is. So Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus. Leslie, where in the Bible does it say your mother's not a dog and that you're not a wild rabid dog, a mutt? Can you show me that in the Bible? Leslie? All right. Right? Thank you, ML. Oh, ML, was he listening right now? 
ML says, my Muslim father confirmed that he's stuck by this argument. He did, he, he, he here right now or you told him in the past? ML, you, you're, your father hearing me right now? Because he said he's stuck by it. Wow. He's stuck by the argument. Oh, so you told him in the past. Good. You see, her Muslim father couldn't answer her or him. I don't know if it's a him or her. I'll revisit Jesus being the word later. By the way, thou shall not pontificate. His daughter of Christ saying amen to She's agreeing? Okay. Let's talk about the virginal conception and birth of our Lord. Okay. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 47. Chapter 3, verse 47. Chapter 3, verse 47. I'm going to have to do a part 2, obviously. Brother makes a good point. She said, my Lord, how can I have a child when no mortal hath touched me? Is there something missing? Because it says he in verse 38. Now puts to verse 38. How can he said so it will be Allah created what he will. If he decreeth the thing, he saith unto it only be and it is. So 347 again. Watch here. Notice her response because I'm going to come back to the response again. And this is what I told Abdullah Aman and he got stuck. Right? She said, my Lord, how can I have a child when no mortal hath touched me? He said, so it will be, Allah createth what he will. If he decreeth a thing, he saith unto it, unto it only be, and it is. Now, chapter 19, verses 20 to 21. Chapter 19, verses 20 to 21. Watch here. Watch Mary's response. I'm a virgin. No man has touched me. I'm not sexually active. How can I give birth as a virgin? Notice again in chapter 19, verse 20, 21. She said, how can I have a son when no mortal hath touched me, neither have I been unchaste? How am I going to get pregnant? I'm not married. I'm not going to have sex. I'm pure. And then notice the response. He said, so it will be, thy Lord saith, it is easy for me. And it will be that we may make of him a revelation for mankind and a mercy from us. And it is a thing ordained. Did you catch it? That's easy. You can have a son as a virgin. But I want you to catch Allah's response. Yeah, that was Muhammad. I want you to catch Allah's response. Chapter 6, verse 101. Watch what's going to happen here. Chapter 6, verse 101. Watch the dilemma of the Muslims. Watch the dilemma of the Muslims. Chapter 6, verse 101. Watch here. The originator of the heavens and the earth, how can he have a child when there is for him no consort, when he created all things and is aware of all things? Did you catch it? Allah responds like Mary did. Allah responds like Mary did. Mary says, how can I have a son? I don't have a man. Allah says, how can I have a son? I have no girlfriend. I'm confused, Allah. When Mary brought that objection, you said, man, you, that's easy. You can have a son, but it's not easy for you. So wait, Allah. It is not easy for you to have a son without a girlfriend, but it's easy for Mary to have a son without a boyfriend, without a husband, without a consort. Wait, what? what? Uh, hold on. Time out. I didn't get that. Wait, wait. Mary responds the way you do, Allah. How can I have a son saying I have no boyfriend, no husband, no consort? And he say, that's easy. You can have a son. Easy. But then you say, how can I have a, a son and offspring when I have no girlfriend, no wife, no consort? That was that was like something that makes someone stupid. I'm stupefied. So Mary can have a son without a consort. That's easy. But it's hard for Allah to have a son without a consort. I'm ready to take shahada. I'm ready to go to the mosque. Hey, uh, Yasser Qadi, Hamza Yusuf, you made a believer out of me. Now this put Muslims in one of two dilemmas. One of two dilemmas. Are you ready? This now puts Muslims in one of two dilemmas. Are you ready to see what the dilemma is? Okay, number one, that means Allah can have a son without having a consort. So Allah destroyed his own objection. Can you imagine? Allah destroyed his own objection in his own book. 
He refuted 6101 in his own book. Good job, Allah, of fighting against yourself and refuting yourself. Excellent, Allah. Way to go. Or number two, here's the second. Are you ready now? Guys, I promise you, if you learn these arguments, re-listen to these arguments and ask the Holy Spirit to help you absorb them and recall them, you will destroy Islam and get Muslims saved by the power of the Holy Spirit and bring them to the feet of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So either Allah, you just refuted yourself, you can have a son without a consort, or you are Mary's consort because Mary cannot have a son without a consort, but you're the one who got her pregnant spiritually. So you are Jesus' father. You are the consort of Mary that got her pregnant without sex, and therefore you father Jesus from Mary. You are her consort, and you are the father of Jesus. One of the two. Which is it, Allah? Which is it? Amen. Idios giri ilioson. Idios, idios giri ilioson. Amen. Which is it, Allah? Either you don't need a consort, you can have a son like Mary didn't need a consort, or if you have to have a consort to have a son, that means you are Mary's consort because she can't have a child without a consort, so you are responsible for getting her pregnant. You didn't have sex with her, but you still caused her to get pregnant, and you sired her child without sex, so you are the father of Jesus according to your logic. You caught it? Either one. Muslims, take your pick. If Mary had no consort and she could have a child, then Allah doesn't need a consort to have a son. He can have a son without a consort. But if no, he can only have a consort, a child by a consort, then Mary must have had a consort, someone that got her pregnant to have a son. And we know who got her pregnant. Allah did by his spirit without sex. So no sex was involved, but he still got her pregnant and she conceived his son. So Muslims, you end up with Allah being the father of Jesus. Not through a sexual act, but by a miraculous act. You can't escape it. That's the only options you have. There is no third option. There is none. Refute me. You caught it? You caught it now? Now let me refute a canard, and then we're done with today's session. And Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. Okay? I'm going to refute a canard. Are you ready? So you take this quarantine as a blessing. God has locked you in the house so you can pray now more, fast more, study his word, fall more in love with him, and we gather together and do more sessions. Okay, now, glory to the triumph God. See, even what Satan intends for evil, God uses it for good to transform us, to get closer to him, become more like Jesus. Okay, now, the objection is this, chapter 3, verse 59. And let's smoke this objection. I'm going to do a part two. And I'm going to do more on born again. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 59. Lo, the likeness of Jesus with Allah is as the likeness of Adam. He created him of dust, then he said unto him, Be, and he is. So the Muslim said, and by the way, Hater Wood stole all my arguments from me, and I made him rich and famous, even though he doesn't send viewers to my channel or support. But I still love Hater Wood for the sake of Jesus. You see, Hater Wood, I ran away that big bad bully, Carlos Savior. He, he, he tried to bully you and punk you out, but I came to your aid because I'm your hero, Hater Wood. All right, now, with that said, let's come back to the issue. Focus on the issue. Muslims say Adam's creation is like Jesus's. In fact, it's greater than Jesus's. So if Jesus is God or the son of God, why isn't Adam? Do you understand the objection? If Jesus is God or the son of God because of his miraculous birth, why isn't Adam a greater God or a greater son of God? And that Muslim, Abdullah Aman, brought that argument the other day. You remember? In the live Q&A, he brought up that argument, and you saw how I walked him through it and refuted it? Now, let me show you how to refute this argument. And by the way, this actually proves that the Quran cannot come from an all-knowing God. An all-knowing God would be smarter than to use Adam as an example. But notice what the argument is in the Quran. The Quran's argument is, well, Adam was created by the word of Allah. 
His birth was miraculous. Creation was miraculous. See, I got you, Christian. If this is the best argument that your God can bring up, what more proof do you need your God doesn't know everything because this is one of the most pathetic objections that anyone could bring? Do you see Allah's response? Well, so what? Jesus is born of a virgin. Adam was created without mother and father. See? Ha, 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 ha. And that's his best. Folks, this is the best argument that Allah, the God of Islam, could bring. Now, you want me to show you how to shut down this argument? Showing that we know better than Allah. We know more than Allah. We are smarter than Allah. Because Allah isn't God. And creatures filled with the Spirit of God, the wisdom of the Spirit, can silence Allah, shame Allah, and refute Allah. Creatures of the Holy Spirit, with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, are more than able to silence Allah, who's supposedly all-knowing. Okay, here's the response. This is what you say. Are you ready? You ready for the response? Okay. You ask them, when Adam was created, were there any human beings prior to Adam? They'll say no. So could it be possible for Adam to be born of a woman? No, there were no human beings. Could it be possible for Adam to be sired by a man? No. Why? Because he's the first human. All right. With Eve, could Eve be born of a woman? No, she's the first woman. So notice what you're telling me. There's circumstances in which Adam and Eve were created, made it impossible for them to come out of human beings because they're the first human beings, right? They're the first human beings. How could Adam be born of a virgin? Or be born of parents. He's the first man. But when we come to Jesus, God had already put in motion the law of procreation, reproduction. Millions of people were born through the union of a husband and wife. Why then did God all of a sudden interrupt that process in order to cause Jesus to be born miraculously of a virgin when he didn't need to? Why did he do it? Would Adam... There was no other way to create Adam because if Adam was born from parents, then he's not the first man. Would Eve, there was no other way for Eve to be designed unless God just wanted to take her from dust, but she couldn't come from a woman. She's the first woman. So the circumstances in which they were created made it impossible for them to come out any other way. With the exception of Eve, he could have created her from dust instead of from Adam. But still, the point is she could not have entered the world through sexual procreation. But Jesus didn't need to be born of a virgin. Nothing in his circumstances required a miraculous birth. So then why was he born miraculously? And the Muslims don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. We have an answer. Can I give you the answer from God's true word? God's only inspired scripture, his only inscripturated word. Luke 1, 34, 35. Yep, and Abdullah Aman in the session, he said, good question. He did not answer. So he's on his way too. Luke 1, 34, 35. Here's your answer, folks. Here's your answer. God's true word, the Holy Bible, gives us the answer. Here you go. Before the rapture. First and last, can you post? Because Protestants decided to leave us behind. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? I'm a virgin. I must stay a virgin. How can I have a son? Notice the answer, folks. Notice the answer, 35. <clears throat> and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. <clears throat> Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. It's because he's a son of God God deemed this to be the only befitting way for a son to become man. The virgin conception of birth of Christ was the only befitting way, befitting the majesty of Jesus to enter the world, to show the world truly he's the son of God and he's not the son of any human man. That's why the virgin conception and birth. You get my point? You understand? Why? The father says, the only befitting way for my son to become a man, to be born as a human baby, to enter this world, befitting his majesty, 
to show the world that truly he's my son and no human man is his father is through the virginal conception and birth. That's why. Let me repeat what Anna Growing said. A Turkish young man came to Christ because of the mystery of the virginal conception. No Mohammedan could answer this for him. And praise the Lord, he came to Christ. Amen. So the Bible gives the answer. The Quran simply apes the Bible. Muhammad simply mimicked the Bible to his shame and destruction. He didn't realize, and the devil that inspired him didn't realize, that these truths that he stole would be used by the trying God to expose him and save Muslims and bring them to the feet of Jesus. How amazing are you, Father, Son, and Spirit, that you allowed Satan to include enough information in this false book to use to bring glory to Jesus so Muslims get saved. How amazing are you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Right? Lord willing, we're going to do more tomorrow. I hope you're blessed. We did two sessions for the glory of Jesus. I pray the Lord save me from all error. If I made any mistakes, may he correct it in me not to repeat them and save you from that. Hit the, the like button, subscribe, upload the videos, the articles, study them, memorize them. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand and memorize them. And disseminate them for the glory of the triune God. Keep praying for my health, holiness, to be holy and pleasing to the Lord. The health I need to keep doing this until the Lord calls me home. Bathe my daughters in prayer, even fast for them, that Jesus will keep them healthy. Bring them to me. Folks, let me share again. Satan tried to hurt me today. As I was talking to my daughters who I have not seen since June. As I'm talking, the youngest one says, Martin is here. That man... Martin came into my home that we purchased for my daughters by the money that the people of God gave me. And my ex-wife got me out and bringing another man, a foreman, into that home that doesn't belong to him or her. It's Jesus' house for my daughters. Pray God removes this man and keeps my daughters for me. It is heartbreaking for a father who aches for his children to hear that. But my trust is in Jesus and I love him. And by his power, nothing that Satan throws against me will destroy me because I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb and I love Jesus more than my children. Keep me in love with you, Lord, and glorify you till I die. You are worthy. So pray for me. We love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. Martin, you must go. Michelle, you must repent and fear the Lord. In Jesus' name. See you tomorrow, Lord willing. Look for me around between 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Is our God beautiful? Is our God amazing? Is he mind-blowing? Father, Son, and Spirit? How amazing and how real is he? Praise his only name. And he's in love with us. May we be in love with him. We love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. In Jesus' name. Take care.